Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So today I am working in watercolor again after a very small break from it and I actually want to talk today about naming your pieces and the benefits that I have gotten from it and my history in doing so and uh, this is actually something that I have a lot of fun with so I'm excited to talk a bit more about it but I do want to give a quick thank you to Squarespace as they are sponsoring this video and Squarespace is a place you can go to build your own websites online and it is incredibly intuitive. I am slowly working on mine and getting mine revamped but it is really a great process of creating my portfolio as well as a store online. So it is a great place to go if you need to create any sort of online presence for yourself that really creates a cornerstone for yourself. So I will actually have a link in the description where you can get 10% off your first purchase with them to go ahead and go build your portfolio and get yourself out there. But moving on with this piece a little bit and what I wanted to talk about. So this one in particular is called finger bones and it's actually a name that's been floating in my head for a while now and i found that most of the time i will usually name a piece afterwards since it it needs a name at that point but this one is actually the reverse where i wanted to create a piece that suited the name first and i actually found that to be really inspiring and exciting to be able to work off of that kind of a that kind of an inspiration so Small side note is that I, I think I'd like to try doing that in the future a little bit more. I have a small list of title names that I have for pieces and it gives me a new challenge of imagining what a piece would be that would suit that name and different ways that I can represent that. So I've been feeling a little uninspired with my ideas. I know I've talked about that a bit, but I think this will help me reconnect with the types of things that I'm most interested in by giving myself a route for inspiration. I I love it when pieces have a really interesting name to it that adds more to the story or or just gives more to it than that. So I would like to be able to do that. Create these titles that I'm beginning to work off of. Uh, but I really just would like to talk about name your pieces in general and how incredibly beneficial it is. I, in my history, in my past, I remember in high school, well, I chose to submit some of my work for a contest and you had to name your pieces. And at that point, it was such a foreign concept to me because I just always created artwork and it didn't have a name. And I felt so shy about it because words were just not something that I was confident expressing. I was confident in in showing my artwork and creating artwork, but anything else that was creative, I felt really, really shy about because I didn't want people to judge something that I didn't feel like I had a complete understanding of. So I didn't want people to look at a title that I made for a piece and, and feel like I did a terrible job doing it or they would make fun of me. It were, there were all these fears that were going through my head when it came time for that, which at this point, it seems really overblown. But those were things that I was worried about and I cared about at that point. But but after a while, I, I began naming my pieces and it wasn't really until actually I started YouTube that I consistently named my pieces since I wanted each, each video that I had, I wanted that piece to have a corresponding name for it. And once I started selling pieces, they also needed to have names associated to it. And once that became a requirement, it became a lot more habitual to think about it that way. And it was really normal now to think of names. And it gave me so much more joy in a piece giving it a name and finishing it off, I found that I was creating more of a story in my head, even if it was after the fact, when I was looking at a finished piece and trying to decide what the title should be for it, it let me think more about it and what could be happening in this universe or to that character. And it provided me more of a connection with the piece than I ever had before. Or when I'm working on a piece and I'm trying to think of the name as I'm working on it, I find that I begin to think more about ways that I can tie that into the piece. How can I have different connecting threads throughout it? And it has seriously improved, like I said, my my connection with the pieces, with the way that I feel about them and with with the quality that I have of the stories inside them. And I just want to really express that it has been a wonderful experience for me. I would really recommend you start titling your pieces if you haven't already. It it makes them feel more legitimate for one thing. I found that 
when I create pieces and they have a name, it just feels like they are complete and they are a piece of artwork and they were made to be viewed and they were something special. And I find that that gives me a lot more confidence maybe in the pieces, in their existence, in showing people and knowing that they have a name. I, I just find that having this second level of creativity that goes into a piece to be really interesting for me, this wordplay or, or words that invoke a certain idea or a feeling. I certainly have a long way to go before I feel really confident and nailed down in the pieces and their names and them providing the most amount of story and interest to them. I'd actually really like to revamp the way that I think about my titles and and give them a little bit more thought and more story to them. But I would I would love to be able to get into more of a rhythm of it being more synergistic between the two, of it being more connected with me, with the piece, with the story. But but yeah, I, I think overall it's just it's a very positive experience that has given me a lot more enjoyment than I ever thought I would, especially breaking out of my shell of being afraid of words and afraid of putting myself out there in that way. And this one specifically, since I was working off a title from the very beginning, it really helped me to get into the mindset of the mood that I wanted for this one. So creating pieces that have a little bit more of a darker side to it and a little bit creepier, I love pieces like that. Those are my favorite ones that I have created in the past. They always stand out to me as the ones that stay near and dear to my heart. And I really want to create more with that that mood in mind and that aesthetic. But I find that I I oftentimes get a little bit lost in in what I want to portray in my pieces from the very beginning. So at least in this specific one where I had this title already, it really helped me to remember that that was a priority to me and to stay focused on that. I I think that I'm definitely going to use this technique in the future, even if it's just working with a, a temporary title or even a few mood words to help me remember what I want to achieve in that piece. I, I know that that's something that's really, I've been lacking in, in my pieces is being able to have the mood that I want and to continue that until I'm completed with it and to feel really connected with it. So I think even when it's just not a title even, but just words that would help ground me in that idea will help me. I I really do think that being able to infuse a different type of creative element into the process and a different way to express these ideas is going to help me really build up on those ideas. So working in tandem with words and with art, I think will improve them quite a bit. But we can talk a little bit about the actual execution of this piece. So for the branch specifically, I really like the effect that it had. After finishing it though, and I find that sometimes it just, it takes hindsight to see some of the best ways that you could have finished a piece, but I would have liked, I think, to have more of a glowing effect on the branch. I think I ended up playing with a few different ideas of how dark I wanted the branch to be or what the actual effect would be. But once I finished it off with a really pale white where it was a very strong contrast, I wish that I had made it, again, glowing. I needed to implement that from the very beginning, from the back from the wash in the background that is to painting his hoodie, everything I would have needed to pay attention to that so that I could have this halo around it, which again, I didn't really think about it till it was too late, but that's one of the things that, that just goes to show that planning out your piece is extremely important for being able to get the most out of it and to portray your ideas the best. But, but I will learn my lesson from that. But I also, I, inked it a little bit differently. So I did originally ink it, but I knew that I was going to paint over it with an opaque color at some point. I couldn't decide if it was going to be gold or white like this, where I would paint it in with gouache at the very beginning. I didn't know, but, but anyways, I ended up painting it with gouache and I tried to eat away at most of the line art. I let some of it peek through a little bit, but some of the areas it was getting lost in his skin since they're similar values. So I went back in with a lighter micron than what I used for most of the painting. And I just did the underside of the branch. And I really liked that effect. It created a little bit of a drop shadow around it in a way 
without it being heavily lined and feeling too artificial. So it still gave it this lightness and a glowing almost effect, but it also helped reinforce some of the areas that I needed to be a little bit more distinct. And I think that's uh, something that I'd like to do more of is be a little bit more light handed with the way that I'm doing the line art and find ways to really emphasize what needs to happen like this branch where it did not need to be nor did I want it to be completely outlined anymore. And I want to give one quick thank you again to Squarespace. Again, they're a great place to put together a very professional portfolio of your work. It's really intuitive and easy to make it look good. I am definitely enjoying that part of it since I struggle with graphic design. It really does help you make it the way you want it to be. So again, if you want a really professional portfolio or you want an online store to be able to put up your own work, this is a great place. I do have, again, a link that'll take you 10% off of your first purchase. And that is just squarespace.com slash Danica. And I'll have a little link down in the description that'll take you over there to try it out. And that is it for today. I do have the original painting of this available as well as prints of him over at my art shop. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there. There's also a link to all of the tools that I used to create this painting down in the description as well. But yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys at my next video, which will be next Wednesday. So I will see you then.